Hey folks, so uh, I thought this thing was long gone, um, but after my old man died, I was digging through some of the stuff in his office closet, and lo and behold, the Apple IIe that he bought brand new in 1983 um, that we learned to program on back in the day. Let's see what it does. Yeah. So there's no uh, there's no boot media in the disk drive. So I should have set up a, a tripod here. There's no way I can press the, all these keys with one hand. Hang on a second. Then we'll run a self test here. You can tell that this has an unenhanced ROM because of the way that the self test runs. It's uh, those. Uh, that solid color on the screen instead of uh, randomly colored blocks. So the hardware test is okay. So that's good. Let's uh, see what we've got in this box here. Ah. Mm. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Oh, don't bend. Control, open Apple, maybe I can hit it with my elbow. Yep, reset. Mm, it's making weird noises, but that may be a copy protected disk. It may be looking for intentional bad sectors to. Yep. Welp. Groovy. Good old load runner. Let's see what else we can find. Yep, good old Tetris. My mother was addicted to this game. Well, the speaker works. Uh, I don't, I've played this like a couple of times. I was never a big fan. Ah! Well, there's a Soviet space station, and I don't know how you control this game. But it would seem that Tetris would be awfully hard to play on a monochrome monitor, huh? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to clean it up, and then we'll do a before and after. Here's the before. Dirt. Mold. Filth. Some of the keys stick a little bit too. Well, the monitor cleaned up pretty good. Um, it's not spotless, but I don't think it's going to give me tetanus anymore. Um, the metal part of the case uh, cleaned up good. I mean, there wasn't much filth on it anyway. None of it's really exposed, but the, the plastic parts of the case... Um, I mean, it's a good bit better than it was, you know, but, uh, I mean, it's still filthy. And that, that stuff's just, that, that filth there's just baked on so hard. Uh, I think when I go to feed the kettle this evening, I'm just going to take it to the pressure washer and then blow it off with the air compressor or something. Blow off all these circuit boards, too. They're terribly dusty now. Why do I have two motherboards here, you may ask? Well, the, the older Apple IIe's were unenhanced, um, which means they didn't have mouse text and they had a different ROM. Um, they had a different video ROM, I think, and most importantly, they had a 6502 CPU. Um, that is the CPU, in it? Yeah, that's the 6502 CPU. Whereas the enhanced Apple IIs, which is what this motherboard came out of, a junked uh, Apple IIe Platinum that I picked up from a, along the road when I was in college in the 90s, late 90s. But um, they, uh, they have a 65CO2 CPU in them. So uh, they're pin-for-pin pin compatible, but this is a CMOS chip. Um, 
and it's got some um, extra instructions that the regular 6502 doesn't have. So, as you can see, this motherboard is, is pretty filthy and it's a little bit damaged. Um, the keyboard was all messed up out of this thing and the case was broken. I think I've got the old keyboard out of it somewhere, but there were a bunch of keys broken off and I don't know where it is. I couldn't find it when I was digging through my junk boxes. Um, so what I was hoping I could do, seeing as how I have no idea whether or not this motherboard works, probably doesn't considering the shape the thing was in um, when I tore to pieces for parts. But what I wanted to do was take the CPU, well, let's point at it on these. I wanted to take out the CPU, the video ROM, probably the keyboard ROM. I think it needs changed too, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And the two system ROMs. And I, I wanted to take them out of the Platinum motherboard and put them into this one. And that would make it into an enhanced Apple IIe. However, if we look here, we've got two ROMs right here on this one. It's never going to focus. But on this one, it, it only has one ROM. So apparently that's something unique to the Platinum 2E. They changed it to one ROM instead of two. It's one ROM chip that is twice the capacity of the two that they used on the earlier boards. That's the very last Apple 2E that was produced, the Platinum model there. So that's not going to work. Um, if I want an enhanced 2E out of this whole deal, I'm going to have to either buy the ROMs from somewhere, which I'd rather not do because I'm a cheapskate, or just put this motherboard into the old case if it works. We'll have to test it and see. So that'll be an interesting project. Um, let's do that, yeah. Now, here are the power supplies out of the two machines too. Um, this is the old power supply out of that machine and this is the newer power supply that I tore out of that Platinum 2 years ago. Now this one has evidence of either maybe some water damage or maybe goop leaked out of a bad capacitor so this may not even work I don't know. Um, so I guess we'll test it and see just just to see if if this power supply does work um, it's a good bit newer than this one and those capacitors do go bad after a while so if this one works and the screw holes are the same which they appear to be um, I'll put this newer one in instead of the old one and just keep the old one around for parts so let's uh, let's test it and this Platinum 2E motherboard and see what happens. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is just, uh, I've got it plugged in here, I'm just going to turn the power supply on uh, without it plugged into the motherboard and see if any smoke comes out of it, so yeah. Alright, I didn't hear anything sizzle. Oh, we've got a power light. Okay, well, maybe the Maybe the motherboard's not so dead. Um, let's see if we get any video. Oh, hang back there out of the way, you. Alright. Now, I think if I recall correctly, without any keyboard hooked up, um, this ought to go straight into a self-test mode. I uh, don't see anything. Oh, yeah, I just didn't turn the contrast back up on the monitor after I was cleaning that case. Well, it seems to be self-testing how it's supposed to. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. Well, that is the enhanced ROM boot message. I think it works. Let's put a disk controller in it and see if it boots something. Here is the drive controller out of that Platinum 2E. Um, it uses a DB19 connector. It's one of the newer style, newer style uh, daisy chain disk controllers. I don't have any daisy chain disk drives for it though. I've only got the disk 2 units there. Now, this is the disk 2 controller out of the old machine. Um, this is the parallel printer interface card out of the old machine, which we have absolutely no use for, considering 
parallel printers haven't been made for years anyway. Um, and here is a third party uh, 64K 80 column card out of the old machine and the Apple 64K 80 column card that came out of the auxiliary slot of the Platinum 2D. I wanted to take it out before I test it in case it caused problems. So um, I'm going to put the 80 column card into the auxiliary slot and put the old disc 2 controller into slot 6 here, which is where they belong, and uh, hook up a disc drive and we'll see if it boots. Yeah. All right. 64K expansion plus 80 column card and the disc controller are in there. Now, I've only got the one disc drive hooked up, and when you hook up these uh, these old disc 2s that use the ribbon cable, you've got to be really careful that you don't get it offset by a pin when you plug the stupid thing in, because otherwise you end up putting um, 12 volts directly onto the like logic board in the disc drive, and it'll fry the disc drive. So if you're working on your Apple II, uh, be darn careful of that. So let's see what's going to happen here. Looks like it works. I don't know. One of these ought to have Super Star Trek on it. I don't know which side though. Control, open Apple, reset. Uh, yep, there it is. Super Star Trek. Uh, I can't believe I remembered that after whatever it is, 25 years <laughs> that it was on this disc. Well, are you going to load? There it goes, Super Star Trek. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I guess the motherboard and the power supply are fine. Um, even though I'm going to pressure wash the plastic parts, I can go ahead and mount this stuff back up. So I'll, uh, I'll be back with you here as soon as we uh, get the thing reassembled and clean. Well, I ended up taking all the keycaps off anyway. Um, this big steel frame on this keyboard, I didn't want that in the dishwasher, so... Still having some trouble with this uh, forward slash key sticking. Um, I've tried dribbling a little bit of rubbing alcohol down into the key switch and working it and getting it getting it cleaned up inside. And I've I've tried get putting some graphite down inside of there and nothing nothing seems to help. But um, underneath of the reset key, there was this little spring though. So I'm going to try to put that spring underneath of uh, the forward slash instead because I, I don't think the reset key really needs it. It's still a little funny but at least it's coming back up all the time now for the moment. Um, I guess that'll have to do. I went ahead and put a second speaker in for later on in the project. Well I have to say the old beast cleaned up a good bit better than I was anticipating. Next order of business is to figure out some kind of color monitor for this thing. I don't know if I have anything that takes composite video input anymore or not. We used to have a color monitor for this thing when I was a kid, but it broke, and uh, my old man went back to this thing. Right. Catch you next time.